Yes. Hit the air right time. Time for Monday morning. Monday morning follow up. Of course, when we overreact to the football weekend, quite a bit of overreaction. <laughs> I should have just let it play. Why didn't I just let it play? <laughs> you doing okay over there? <laughs> that was so funny. I did leave the, the whiskey out. I, did, I guess I didn't check the level, but okay. Shouldn't leave it out. <laughs> Monday morning fallout. We overreact to the football weekend and quite a bit of overreacting to do. Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, holiday havoc. Mm. Christmas. Um, it was a Christmas. It was odd, right? It was odd to be watching and paying attention to high school football this past weekend because we haven't done it in a while. We haven't played games over Christmas in a long, long time. But the games ended up coming through in a way that I think was uh, at some points relatively surprising and at the other at other at very least was very interesting to watch. Now there were games that I don't think were particularly interesting to watch. For example, uh, I thought that uh, when you took a look at uh, what Westlake did to San Antonio Stevens, the machine is online for Westlake. They looked really really good in their huge win over San Antonio Stevens. That game kind of leave that aside. Um, I thought Manville really took taking apart Fort Penn Hightower, you know, yeah. pretty pretty impressive stuff. Uh, Alito was win over Frisco. You were there. It Alito just Alito just kind of does dominant. what they do, which is just kind of Frisco struck early, right? Frisco did strike early. Yeah, it was tied seven seven, mm -hmm. um, and then it wasn't tied right. seven seven. Okay. <laughs> but you also had these very, very, I would say, I don't want to say seismic. Some of them were seismic. Some, Some of them were. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they were necessarily. I, I mentioned this on Twitter. I don't know if they're necessarily upsets these times of year because I think every team's really good. Mm -hmm. There were only there were only a handful of teams that I would have been surprised if they had won. Yeah. And I don't think any of those teams won. But there was one on Saturday night that I think people are going to be talking about it for a while, and that was Eulis Trinity's win over Allen, mm -hmm. forty nine forty five, and any time. J this is just the the soup that Allen swims in. Mm -hmm. Anytime they lose, it's noteworthy. Yes. Anytime they lose, because they are they don't one lose. of the most dominant <laughs> programs in the state of Texas. But this is the second consecutive year that somebody has knocked them out before the regional final. Mm -hmm. And it comes from Eulis Trinity. And an unbelievable game to watch, an unbelievable game to follow. It was, I believe, the last game of the night. Or... Pioneer and Eastview may have still been going. Yeah, it was like, because of the massive scoring. But in that, that was game. that was there was that. You had that going on. I thought I thought it, we're going to talk with their coach here in a moment. But I thought Rockwell Heath's win over Bridgeland was really it was dominant. Dom that's that's where the surprise comes. Mm -hmm. The surprise doesn't come from Heath winning. I think we all know at this point that he's a pretty darn good team. But I think it's surprising that they ran away with that mm -hmm. and that they were able to pounce on a slow starting Bridgeland team mm -hmm. and run away and hide well yeah that's what was so impressive when they got like when Bridgeland finally started to start cooking a little bit you, I was like oh okay mm -hmm. this game is about to completely turn and they just kept kept hitting them uh, I thought that Crosby over Huntsville is a pretty again not an upset but probably a surprise yeah that they went in overtime 32-29 uh, kick a field goal and win it. So that's back-to-back -back weeks that they have taken down. Who we thought would most right. likely be the two teams to be in the, in Texas, you know. In Texas High and Huntsville. Back-to-back -back weeks. And that offense, very impressive for them. I thought that Red Oaks went over Coronado. Again, I don't think that's an upset at all. I thought it was a coin flip type game. But the way that it happened, where it goes, to, where Red Oak mounts this huge, this huge comeback. They were down 28-7, I want to say. They mount a huge comeback, force overtime, end up going to double overtime, winning on a blocked extra point, uh, and, and winning the winning the stinking game. That was impressive as well. If you're looking for a true blue upset, eh, eh, I guess, Mansfield Summit over Colleyville Heritage is probably what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, no doubt. Mansfield Summit was a fourth-place team in their own district. district. In fact, 
Some might argue they were a fifth place team in their own district because they got in on some kind of wacky DEC rules. Mm -hmm. Well, here they are in a regional final now after a 34-31 win over Colleyville Heritage. That is awfully impressive as well. So overall, you take a look at, 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 the, at the statewide perspective. I think you had some games that were not necessarily surprising. Mm -hmm. For example, I thought North Shore's win over uh, Tompkins, not surprising they won. The fact that they kind of went out there and mopped the floor. I thought the same thing with uh, Duncanville. Duncanville over. I mean, they were up like fifty-six nothing. I mean, they 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 clobbered them. Though that to me is what where the havoc came about over in the Mm -hmm. regional in the regional semifinals. Thought number two, two L's, different feels. Okay, so I had no idea where you were going with this one. You don't? (laughs) I don't think so. Over the holidays, there were two bowl games. Ah, yes. Involving state of Texas teams. Both featured the team from Texas losing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you had the, what was that? The First Responders, Responders Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. First Responders Bowl. Louisiana beats UTSA 31-24. You also had the Frisco Bowl mm-hmm. in New Mexico. or I'm sorry. The, the New, New Mexico, Mexico Bowl, Bowl in, in Frisco, Frisco. Where Hawaii beats Houston uh, uh, 28-14. Mm-hmm. Which hurt you and free money, which I think makes me happy. I went one and one, so I clinched a winning season. Damn it. I think for UTSA, going up against a 19th ranked team in Louisiana, a team that was 10 and one, whose one loss on the year, I believe, was to Coastal. Um, for them to hang with them and them to push that into the final play, to basically the final play. I think they're. I think that only continues the trajectory of this UTSA program. That they are on the rise. That they are. That things are going in the right direction for UTSA. I know it's disappointing to finish your season with a loss, but I think seven and five and a lo- and a loss to a ranked, a top twenty team in a bowl game, mm. that's impressive. And I don't think there's anything for UTSA to hang their head about. We're gonna have some difficult conversations about Houston, about this this off season. They finish three and five. They get. They get absolutely clobbered in a lot of ways by Hawaii. The score doesn't indicate that, 28-14. No, but it was dominant. Houston looked like they never came off the bus. Mm -mm. And And Hawaii had to come off of a plane. Right. Literally. I mean— Like a long plane ride. (laughs) Um, And so now— we are, and we'll, we, we, as we get deeper into the offseason, we're going to have postmortems for all of these teams. Uh, But we are now— Two years into the Dana Holgerson era at Houston, mm-hmm. and they are seven thirteen. Yeah, and I'm I, I like Dana Holgerson, and I believe that he can get that thing turned around. But he's got to start doing it. But it's got to start happening, and you got to start seeing results because I think last year he got a now now we'll do do this in the postmortem. Last year he got a pass because of uh, the D.R. King opt out because mm-hmm. of all those players and the redshirting and you thought okay he's got a plan he's got a plan yeah he's well t- the plan's got to show up the, first time. <laughs> the plan's got to show up mm-hmm. and by the way we talked with Greg Powers our recruiting expert the other day it's not like the recruiting's going great either nope so to me you had these two bowl games and both of them ended with the same result but one of the teams UTSA pretty good i don't think there's really you know yeah you want to get a win but not not necessarily anything to hang your head about for houston huge questions heading into this offseason heading into 2021 and thought number three new year's bash we are going to be playing texas high school football games in the 2020 season in 2021 and that's weird that's very weird but we are now at the regional final level so there are 16 games this weekend Mm -hmm. and of those 16, I think 13 could be certified bangers. Yes. You have a terrific slate of games mm-hmm. with, I think, in a lot of ways, a, a, a good number of really evenly matched teams mm-hmm. going at it. I think we are in for a fantastic week in the Texas high school football ranks in the regional finals um, simply because we've gotten to the point where all these teams have proven themselves to be really, really good. And there's enough tape on each other that there's going to be a lot of uh, chess matches going on as well. So and it's going to be fun. I like the evenly matched comment because it really does seem like teams who just kind of absolutely destroyed their opponent last week in that, like, the havoc that we were talking mm-hmm. about, they got matched up with another team that did that. So it's not like, you know, yeah. that, that evenly matched makes for such a good weekend of football. So there it is. Those are three big thoughts. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker. For Eulis Trinity running back Ollie Gordon. He's probably still running. (laughs) 
Ollie Gordon carries 49 times. Mm-hmm. So he becomes the 40th player in UIL 11-man history to carry 49-plus times in a game. Mm-hmm. For 455 yards and six touchdowns. And Trinity's win over Allen. Um, that, like, stunning. I just Shocking. just kept running. <laughs> he is a... I'm trying to think of, like, the what animal I want to compare him to. And here's the animal I want to compare him to. You know what he is? What? He's a moose. That's what he is. He's a stinking moose. You want to stand in front of a moose? No. I don't want to stand in front of fair. a moose. That's fair. And they do have a... They have some go to him. Like they got a kick to him. What a monster he was <laughs> out there. I did not expect this, but over, it makes sense. In their win over Allen. He was trendy running back. Ollie Gordon gets a helmet sticker. By the way, he started to pick up offers. And it's like, my brother... So this is how big it was. Mm-hmm. My brother, who's like, mm, you know, he knows what I do for a living, but doesn't really pay attention to high school football. Um, he texts me and he goes, this all like Gordon getting, getting looks. Mm -hmm. And like, you look at his offer list before this weekend and it was like, his best offer is probably like Iowa state. State, Yeah. Like he had offers from like Houston. He had offers from like good G five or like the kind of secondary Mm -hmm. for Texas team P five kinds. Like he had an offer from Kansas. Yeah. Suddenly everybody starts waking up like, Oh, we should probably offer. Yeah. Anyway, helm sticker for him. A helm sticker. For UTSA running back Sincere McCormick, uh, again, it did not it did not end the way that he they wanted to, but I thought Sincere McCormick uh, once again put on a show. He runs for 122 yards uh, in their win over, or rather their loss to Louisiana. And if you take a look at, I want to look at his game log. That is his one, two, or yeah, one, two, three, four, five, sixth, seventh hundred yard game this season. Mm-hmm. He was awesome this year. So, and he was named, our, by the way, our uh, player of the year, our college football player of the year. Uh, Shahan J. Raja and our college football staff named him that. So a uh, helmet sticker for UTSA running back Sincere McCormick. And a helmet sticker for Sherilyn Pioneer quarterback Eddie Lee Marburger. Hashtag let ELM cook. Look, look I, love, I love when we get memes going and they come through. Mm-hmm. This kid goes let me just let me let me drop some some stats on you okay because because he cooked up a five course meal oh my gosh he was unbelievable in there whenever georgetown east you he goes let me find this come on there we go you tweeted it Step 24 of 37 444 yards and four touchdowns passing he carried the ball 20 times for 247 yards and six touchdowns on the ground so he had nearly 700 yards of total offense and 10 touchdowns in their win over Georgetown Eastview, a helmet sticker to hashtag let ELM cook. I was able to catch the second half of that game. I missed the first half. They were down like 14 nothing at one point, correct? Were, Pioneer? Yeah, were they down? Pioneer went down. I think they were down like 7 nothing. Okay, because that's what happened. I watched a little bit of the beginning, saw East them go scored, down. Like, right the jump. Yeah, and then I started cooking dinner. Once I got done, I looked down at my phone and the Slack chat said. Uh, Once you got done cooking dinner? Oh, then <laughs> Eddie Lee, Lee got started cooking. cooking. <laughs> yeah, I looked down and Stefan sent in the Slack chat. He's up to nine touchdowns, and I was it's like, "Crazy!" He just kept going. What? <laughs> Those three helmet stickers, three to see. Then Ryan Highland Park, three o'clock, three fifteen rather, Friday, at Globe Life Park in Arlington. Interesting kickoff time. Uh, it's a businessman special. Yeah, three fifteen Friday. Look, I mean, I don't need to tell you about the history between these two teams. Mm-hmm. You have two teams that um, that three of the last four seasons, Highland Park has eliminated Denton Ryan. I think Denton Ryan has the talent advantage in this game because I think they have the talent advantage maybe over any team in the state. Yep. But does Highland Park just own Denton Ryan? That's yeah. the question. We'll find out. Big game. The Alamo Bowl, Texas and Colorado, 8 o'clock Thursday, or Tuesday rather. At the, at the Alamo Dome in uh, San Antonio. Uh, so, yeah, check that out, Texas and Colorado. And finally, we have a Crosby and Fort Penn Marshall. Yeah. That's going down 1 o'clock Friday at Turner Stadium in Humble. That game's going to be a lot of fun. You've got one of the hottest teams in the state in Crosby against what has felt like a team. Fort Penn Marshall's odd. They're a team that mm-hmm. I don't think I can necessarily get a read on. Right. But when they play well, and they played really well against Nederland, they're certainly a team to be reckoned with. So that'll be a fun uh, game to see. That is to read to see. And that is Monday Morning Fallout.